Hi, Melinda Iverson in here from Wisdom Keepers of Earth. And today I got to speak with our friend Rory Duff from the UK. I don't know if you remember or not, but Rory is a geobiologist, earth energy researcher, and an author. He's written wonderful books on the current state of the earth energy lines, relationship to mythology, and how we can weather the storm of these ever-changing currents in energy. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. Rory is a wonderful resource. Anyway, enjoy. Good morning. Well, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> How are you doing over there? It's so it's um it's been interesting. There's a lot going on energetically here, but you know I think overall and the weather's been very odd. We've had a lot of overcast and kind of stormy weather. So anyway, where are you? Are you home? Are you home in? Uh... I'm home uh, in um, just south east of Bath in a small place called Bradford on Avon. Oh, I've been there. I didn't know. Yes. Yeah, I stayed up on the hill, up way up on a hill. The taxi couldn't take me. I had to walk okay. up, up to the top of the hill. So It's quite a pretty little place. It, and it looks like you're very warm. So that's great. Like you're like in uh, this is this is a leftover tan from uh, me managing to get to to have two weeks over in Florida in March. Oh good. Okay. <laughs> My son had a, a wedding over there and uh, I somehow managed to get there and uh, Spent a lot of the time in the sun, and it sort of kept up. <laughs> so and it's you, not British, and it's you not have a British name. And you have a lightweight shirt on, which is great to see. Most yes. everyone I talk to yes. have got sweaters on, and they're all bundled up. <laughs> it, it, it's the vitamin D. We've got to get as much as we can. Yes, yes. Okay, well, Rory, it's wonderful to have you back. Thank you for agreeing to chat with us again. I know you have lots of updates. So just, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I'm just going to say, please start where you feel is most appropriate for the updates. Um, on... Is there something specifically you wanted me to cover today or any questions you've got? Uh, you know what? I do have a couple of questions. I wanted to go back to March of 2019 newsletter, believe it or not. Yeah, okay. I'm completely, you'll have to remind me. I'm, what, going, to rem I'm going to remind you of it. So you talk about the time of legends back then and with the emperor dragons and the mythology stories, you know, the serpents and the colors of the red and the white and the black. And the reason I want to go back there is because I think sometimes the audience needs a little context. I mean, we're so far ahead of what's happening right now. I'd like to go back and give them a little bit more understanding from a different perspective about these energy lines and especially the emperor dragon lines and in that newsletter you talk about the the red the white and the black colors and that they would come in pairs the white the red and the black and we're living in this time of legends you know what can we learn from from all of this right now hmm that I stump you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe uh, we should <laughs> maybe we should start from where you are and then maybe go back. But you know, I think it's a it's a good idea to just touch on the legends and the myths because uh, amidst them we find snippets of universal prophecies and we get ideas for for what happened before that might happen again on great large large cycles. And, and if it's the legends that I'm thinking of, it, it's uh, it is connected to the Quero um, uh, Indians from Peru, and I know you wanted to talk a bit about that. Um, but, but linking them with the Emperor Dragons, one of the things that uh, struck me as odd uh, some time ago now, um, with, with a, a book, Children of Light, by, by Judith Bluestone Pollock, I mean, when she referred to the gateways to the ancestors and the gateways to the gods opening and closing over vast periods of, of years uh, and and yet they didn't open and close at the same time and um 
it, it, it was it was that which began to make me think well maybe there's a connection to the appearing and disappearing emperor dragons and the gateways being the portals being the nodes um so i think they identified the different uh, frequencies of these energy lines in different colors and and um I'm just wanted to check check with you. Is that is that was that where I'm heading with this? With, with yes, regards that's to this right. Question? Well, you you kind of knew that the black lines were going to come in last. I mean, you you when you were doing these writings, I think did that represent the emperor dragons that were going to come in last from this time of legends? So the pairs of the white, the red, and the black. Yeah, that, that's that's right. The the, the, the strange thing was. The initial uh, um, legends talked about three pairs of these emperor dragons. And at that point, since about 2012, or just before that, we, we it was a group of us uh, were hit with some synchronicity all at the same time when, when um, my friend Ron Pearson, who was a scientist who'd come up with his new theory on the creation of the universe and had explained scientifically how intelligence must have arisen. Um, he and I were working heavily together on his theories and, and me with the linking with the, the very low frequency vibrations. And, and a friend of uh, both of ours, well, firstly his, was a, a, a fr French medium called Brigitte Rix, and she she contacted us both with regards to some snippets of information she'd had from her guides uh, in regards to a, a great book I'm sure you'll know, which is uh, Seth Speaks by, by Jane Roberts. And specifically, he, she wanted to point out uh, to, to, to Ron uh, aspects of, of the true nature of reality that Seth talks about that linked to his work. In particular, the appearance and disappearance of particles in a rapid, rapid level, giving them a frequency. But for me, she wanted to introduce me to the concept of the absolute coordinate points, the main coordinate points. And when I read those, I'm thinking, well, these are descriptions of the energy lines. And and yet, she talked about four absolute coordinate points, which were more powerful than any possible points. And that meant that there had to be much bigger lines than we already knew. Going around the Earth, you know, the, we thought that the Michael and Mary line, for instance, and was the biggest energy line there was. Um, but at that same point in time, one, one of my good friends, Carol Everett, who's just this amazing healer, who'd lived in Crediton, where I'd known her many, many years ago, in the 1990s, uh, she's she a scientifically tested healer. Her her, her, her healing sanctuary in in Crediton in Devon was actually on the St Mary line, but they decided not long after that to go to live in Spain. And uh, this is about the same time we got the information from Brigitte. She, she rang me up and said, I just found this place in Spain in the mountains where the energies were off off the scale. They were just huge. And I'm thinking, OK, so <laughs> I thought you, was, you, you were used to the most powerful energy lines I'd come across. And now you're telling me you found something which is far, far more powerful. And, and again, very close to that moment in time, there's a lovely fellow called Manique uh, Hirland and Dalla. Uh, that uh, has a healing sanctuary in Kerala in, in southern India. And he'd been talking to me about his circumambulation of Mount Kailash and these huge energies coming out of that. So we think, hang on a minute. Uh, we need to investigate what, what's going on here. And, and that resulted in us finding these three emperor dragons, which ran, and we mapped them around the world and where they crossed over. Um, and that's when I saw... The connection with the Quero uh, legends about the the, the coloured three different colours lines and the uh, gateways opening and closing, um, but um, that was also linked to this rather interesting um, prophecy, also legend uh, of uh, the last time these we think these uh, lines were repaired and, and placed in a node. At that time, it was at Raki, a, a temple of Viragocha. And they talked about the Malku in pairs walking the lines to their final destination at the, at the temple. Uh, so it, it, it struck me then as that they were talking about repairing really powerful nodes using these emperor dragons. Um, so th that, I think, is what, what linked me to what they were talking about and what they were doing with the lines. And at that point, we knew there was a, a possibility of somewhere in Peru there might be a powerful node. 
but the mapping didn't show it at that point. Um, but it wasn't until 2017 that uh, all the energy lines just doubled in width, and, and that just shocked so many of us. Why, why has that happened? And, and the, the the best understanding of that we have so far is that because our magnetic field had dropped, more cosmic energy was coming through, and that was getting to the center of the Earth, and that was being projected out as more low frequency waves, and that was the point when we we found that the, the extra the fifth the fourth fifth and sixth emperor dragon appeared after that and and that's when it appeared running with the fifth one appeared running through peru in in a northwest southeast direction and that then suddenly made the, the, this node uh obviously what was going to occur in in the legends and i think they'd given it these colors and they'd given uh it a, a symbolism as well because each line had a sort of frequency and a feeling that that uh that uh, engendered certain emotions and, and fears or things that within them and it was it, 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 it that undoubtedly affects people's lives um so i think that's how it got the colors and how, how they sort of stuck and, and and then they added the sort of fables onto it but it also now led to the fact that we've now have um two pairs of emperor dragons crossing over in peru mm. but i say that and until they were until two days ago oh <laughs> What's That's happened with the Emperor Dragons in Peru? We'll perhaps get to that a bit more, but um, yeah, that, that that I think it, it, it was. Was there any, any other questions about that? That well, you know, or... I I it, it's in your book, Rail Bound. That's why I I, I was asking because yeah. there's a quote in your book that says, "In the beginning, the White Dragon was a friend to the people, and it became too powerful, and then the Red Dragon came and." They fought, three great times of shaking occurred, and then the black serpent came, and the serpent separated the people from the spirit, which is the sun. After the black dragon, there was a bright light in the sky for 12 days. When serpents awaken, the time of great trials will affect the mind. And I thought, okay, <laughs> where are you going with that? <laughs> no, that? That's an interesting thing. Thanks for reminding me about trials that will affect the mind. And, and and that's a really telling, telling statement there. But but you can tell from from that if you listen to the symbolism that what what we're getting is quite a long story of how there was balance, and then there was an imbalance, yes. and then we're returning back to balance. And and, and I think when the serpents are at imbalance, when we have disharmony, we, we're going into this period of individual consciousness, which Steiner talks about. So we descend from group consciousness, go into individual, and then back through a series of uh, global events to, to group consciousness again. And um, the Quero have, a, have a, a name for that. They call it the Tarape Pacha, which which means refinding themselves, uh, refining ourselves. And, and uh, they also have uh, times called times of master, whereby... Uh, Literally, people in the past have thought this is the times when the world is overturned. Why we find quite a few people today thinking uh, that the world's going to flip on its axis and everything's going to be overturned. <clears throat> but when you when you dig deeper into it, it's it's our perceptions uh, that are, are actually overturned. It's the world that stays the same, but our perceptions of what our reality is will be changed, and that's that is very much linked to the trials that affect the mind. Uh, and as we return to group consciousness, that there, uh, what we think of as, as reality now will be affected because we, our range of perceptions will widen much, much more than our current range. So we will we will see, hear, and feel far more than we currently see, hear, and feel, and, and we're going to have difficulty coping with that. So uh, from, the, from the legends' point of view, it's like they knew it happened before, and now uh, it's what's happening again, and it's linked to this to these serpents. And and the, and the arriving emperor dragons and the disappearing emperor dragons as these portals open and close and as as all the frequencies come into harmony and the balance returns, mm -hmm. um, that in a way though is still symbolic externally of what really needs to happen internally, and that's the key. So. Well, it seems like all of these um, prophecies are all sort of pointing in the same direction, you know, with the Hindu yugas and. Um, the 20, what is 27,000 years? 
of uh, wisdom that's coming up again. So the re-emergence of the dragon line seems to coincide with that and the and the wisdom that's coming through cosmically as well. So we're being assisted. We just have to buckle our seatbelts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a bit more than buckling our seatbelts. And, 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 and you rightfully mentioned the yugas and indeed the yoke between them. But, but I would I'd point out the 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 original mention of yugas was in the Rig Veda, and it doesn't mention about the exact amount of time. They just talked about it as being generations. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was only in later uh, um, descriptions in the in the Bhagavad Gita Puranas and and later what Sri Yukatswara. Yeah, divine science. He's yeah. he, he links it to two two cycles of twelve thousand years, and um, that I think with the normal aberrations of memory and, and storytelling, probably links closely to the, the, roughly the processional cycle of 24, 24 and a half, 24, 8,000 years, roughly linking into the, the, the cycle of the constellations as we pass through them, and, and, and roughly also linking to two periods of time when we go through the galactic current sheet. Mm. Uh, science kind of mix up generally with it, but... but we, we can't be accurate because there's natural uh, randomness that the Earth encounters as it travels through space and the, as it travels through different parts of the current sheet. We can't have it exact. And this is the interesting thing is that it, it's it's retained in our memory because it, humans have passed through this before. And as soon as that's happened, then it's retained by our subconscious, and that means it's accessible if we tap into our subconscious and ask the right questions and, and we get this slightly ambiguous sim- sim- symbolism back, we, we have a chance of of predetermining more and more precisely as we near it, exactly mm-hmm. what, where, and when it's going to happen, which I think is the interesting challenge now. We, we will, we're will never given a sort of a dead-end event where life stops completely, <laughs> but we have got challenges which are linked to our uh, our learning and development. Um, yes 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 i was recently looking at to just a side note looking at the neural net map of the brain and it looks exactly like the night sky so (laughs) as above so below we know we recognize it and that's one of the avenues i feel like Uh, absolutely with the um if if you're if you're an advocate of the electric universe when you see these (laughs) filaments of energy and you, and you are finding on these sort of deep space telescopes like the James Webb Telescope, these uh, electromagnetic currents that link between galaxies now, you know, between the large and small megalonic clouds. It's, it's obvious now there's a, there's a filament of energy and cosmic energy that bridges the two. And you do when you come back, you do see this neural network just like the human brain. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What is it that you want us to know now? I'll tell you what I think. And it's a gradual dawning of, of, if you look at everything that's going on in the world right now, we're obviously being challenged. And people are thinking, well, what can we do? How can we change things? Yes. Yeah. More than, I would say more than, no, 78% of the world are struggling financially to live, to try and cope. So you're left with this question, well, what is it can we do? And I think there's just an inkling on the horizon here of the power we can have if we come together the right way. And um, I'm hoping we're going to see this more and more as we gather to the, the, the sacred sites like our ancestors is used to in the past. And if we, if we do commu- communal visualization in conjunction with these energ- energies, uh, and and literally activate the energetic grid of the world, mm. and we're be just beginning to touch on the, on on how this affects us individually. I mean, we we have these group meditations now of a couple of hundred people at these at these sacred sites, and and you know I know there's lots of people who do meditation in the past in groups, but when you put them on a sacred site, when that site's in harmony and you connect with those energies. It just amplifies it no end. And and the first dose, most obvious thing is people are just spellbound. They're, they're rooted to the spot and they just can't move. It's just a, a sense of enjoyment that they don't want to end. But it goes beyond that. 
because when you start linking between the sites with other groups, you begin to feel that energy really grow and spread in a far bigger, wider area to the extent that you can then direct this energy, a bit like what well, we all know we can direct individual energy uh, and, and in healing, that, that, that's what, what healers will do and, and a lot of other therapists. But um, if we do this with the earth energies, we're beginning to realize that, th th again, through the energies teaching us, which is the old Gnostic serpent, uh, uh, the, the teacher, the instructor, that in order to dispel the darkness in in certain places, because we've got one or two cities in, in the UK which have got pretty murky backgrounds, as well as some not very nice practice going on today. And when we ask what we're, to, what we're supposed to be doing about this, we're seemingly being guided to set up beacons of light around the city. In other words, man the nodes around the city, bring the light through and send the light into the darkness, if you like. Not that I think light and dark is opposites in any way, it's just light and less light. But when you do that, there seems to be an environmental energetic effect where the people who are uh, habitually enjoying their darkness find it hard to derive that same level of pleasure. And they kind of like dissipate and move on, or they can't carry on with it. They sort of, and, and I got a feeling that uh, that's something if we amplified it could make a huge difference. And that's that's kind of what seems to have happened just recently, which is which I think is an interesting story. If you wanted to go that way, <laughs> yes, please, please share. Uh, I'm tracking you. I I find what you're saying absolutely true. And the other part of that that I want to um, bring up is that you know it's also as they say an inside job. So those that are meeting, as you say, at these nodes or that can gather the energy by the group coming together. Also, it's a must that we begin to clear out all the things that are coming up because I think what's happening a lot with these, when I said buckle your seatbelt, you know, and you said, well, it's a little more than that. I know you're not kidding because personally, I've also felt a lot of what needs to be released is coming up. And, and I want the audience to know it's okay. It's okay. Whatever's coming yeah. up during this yeah. time period, just know well, that you're better than okay. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever's happening, we need to happen externally, has to happen internally. And there's just so many snippets of, of wisdom you find from so many disciplines, like that physician heal thyself. Uh, you know, there's there's a wonderful, uh, wonderful legends which always have a mirror in it okay there's the mirror of yata as the, in japan there's the, uh, the smoky mirror the toltec tale uh even one i came across recently was uh, in, in sufism which is the um the can i just remember the name the congregation of the birds i think it is um yeah the conference of the birds when 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 uh Again, the within the darkness, with, with the final moment, you realize you have to look in the mirror. Yes. And and what you see in the mirror is should be perfection, or as close as you can get to perfection. So you're going through this period of darkness, which I think humanity is collectively going through this abyss, this dark night of the soul right now, where we're being shown and challenged uh, uh, our weaknesses. And, and Steiner talks about this with the the three beasts that will, will punish our doubts and our, our, our fears and our assumptions uh, if they're not in line with the true nature of reality. And I think this is what we're going through, and this is where the psychopaths are, are helping us address these fears and doubts and, 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 uh, and, and wrong assumptions, if you like. And, um, and ultimately, yes, if we want the world to change, we have to change, and we're being shown this. And the best lessons are generally the most painful ones. <laughs> so, so, so if you try and go with the flow, it just might be a bit easier for you. And and, and um and Sina talks about that if you if you go with the flow and you you, you don't succumb, you'll be able to soar across the abyss. And, and and again again, that's so simple to say, but then he talks about well, what you need to do to soar and how do we meditate in order to soar? And there's another long period of of working with heart centeredness and recognizing how to balance the energies coming down and coming up within you and 
yes. weaving it within the soul. I mean, it's too much to talk about, but there's, there's a journey there. Yes. I know collectively when we're together, it helps. It's massively, you know. Yes. Well, I recently had an experience. Uh, I also just traveled, came back from um, California. And there was a time when there was so much traffic, I could feel my whole bo- driving, my whole body just getting into this tense. And my husband said, well, you just need to learn to relax now. Now, now, now. Relax now. <laughs> when I get to where I'm going, I'm going to relax. It doesn't work that way. Relax now, breathe now. So, so slowing down. And I think that's part of this process is Everyone taking a beat and just breathing and slowing down. I wanted to say that. No, no, absolutely. And, and I think I could, if I can add one thing that I'm beginning to sort of learn myself, because I have the same issue. I'm, you know, I've got so much I want to do, and I'm being, being slowed down through injuries, not helping me to type. But, but one of the things I've, I've come to begin to sense is that we're not being rushed. This is not a transformation that's last minute. It's not one that's out of control. We've got to play catch up. You know, we've got quite a lot to learn. And in fact, there's there's a realization, and this came earlier from from watching Stein or reading, listening and re- reading to Stein. I'm not listening. He he wrote this amazing book called Evolution of Consciousness. Actually, it was a series of lectures he ran in North Wales. Uh, right, uh, and he used to go up in the in the in the day to the, the, the Druid circles, just in the mountains above. So he, he was very much aware of, of the energies in the Druid circles. But this this series of lectures at, at a place called Pen Mind Moor were about the evolution of consciousness. And um, uh, uh, he, he was of no uncertain understanding that, that he wasn't going to see it. He was training his audience to prepare them for when they came back in the in into this life again they were reborn again he was he was he was teaching this themselves and their souls so that when they were reborn they're closer to understanding it. and and today we're closer to these these events but i think we're still preparing the way for our children i love that point we're not in a rush yeah. it's all coming together it's going to come. it's inevitable so just yeah, and we are not, and again, you know, we're not having to get large numbers right away. If we've got one percent, the, the the extra one percent will pop in, and then the next to four percent will pop in. And uh, but once we get to about ten percent of the people who are who are joined in meditation, who are just beaming out positive energy, who are looking to go within to improve themselves, the the, the, the ultimate understanding of it all is that we all have to evolve. Yes. The earth has to evolve. Even the psychopaths, we have to help them evolve. But we we help them by be by building the mass of, of, of uh, resonance, morphic resonance, as Sheldrake says, right. so, they, so that they too will evolve. And 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 one of our our amusing understandings recently is that um, <laughs> it, it it's even the animals. That have to evolve, but the the, the 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 amusing thing is that when you start connecting and trying to get some further greater understanding, it's like we're the last in the universe. <laughs> Even the animals are evolving faster than we are. <laughs> you just see, it, it's just you know, they they are giving us hints about what's happening. It's like they are so connected and we're not. Yeah, so, they've been they've been carrying us for a while, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, <goodness. laughs> Showing so, the so, way. Yeah, so that there's all there's a good good signs there. We're we're on the way, but but coming back to that point where there is so much despair, people think, well, what can we do? You know, well, if we if we gather enough with with uh, intent, if we follow in synchronicity, synchronicity is so important, not just to know what you're supposed to be doing, but but the timing of it all. And and a, a case in point was um. Since 2017, 2018, we've known that this node in Peru, this first order node, and there are only seven on land in the, in the, in the world. It's the only, it's the last first order node that needs to be repaired. But you have to know who's going to do it. The locals have got to know, so you've got to know the locals. And you've got to know when to do it, because you can't do it just in this world. There's, there's people all in all the other worlds who are having to do this. So how do you go about that? There's only one way. It's, it's synchronicity. You've got to be guided. And um, 
it, it might not even be you, you know, it's just because you know about it, it doesn't mean you, you're doing it. So we, we waited, we, we've really lectured now, nearly six years now, we're waiting to do this. And it's only recently that we've been getting the signs. And, and what's fascinating was it wasn't just about this particular place in Peru, it was also about the connection between Machu Picchu and Rome that we were only aware of just recently and how that had to be unlocked. And then Rome, we only just recently found where the, the really the, the original node was in Rome. And literally people were emailing me, I've just been here, or I want to tell you about this experience. And 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 three or four people independently told me exactly the same place we would we finally had come to on the island on the, on the Tiber Island and the on the River of Rome. And this was wasn't where we were expecting it in any way. Um, but I just because, want to ask you. What, I'm just going to ask you. First order node. Please remind. Yeah, me if you've got this. if you've got the uh, emperor dragons, the emperor dragons will only ever node when they cross other emperor dragons. And if you've got six, almost great circles going around the world, there's in in the region there's uh, um, thirty odd uh, intersections. Uh, however. Um, because the north-south emperor dragon doesn't node at the moment, you've just got five lines. So that's 20 intersections, of which we found seven on land, the rest are in the oceans or the seas. So we, 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 we gradually repaired over the time through synchronicity, all of them, uh, um, apart from this one. And, and uh, the one in particular is that the line from the Emperor Dragon in, in, in Peru runs all the way across Brazil, through the across the Atlantic, along the southern southern part of Spain, to the node that we repaired 2012 in that group bail, bail bound. Uh, there, across through Ibiza, northern Sardinia, all the way across to uh, a really powerful site south south of Rome called Mount Carpo, and, and bizarrely, it, it runs right through. The Pope's summer residence at Castle Gandolfino, which was a, 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 an ancient Roman place as well with shrines. I mean, you couldn't make it up. And, and I don't know if you know about the uh, the recent problems the Roman Catholic Church has been having, but there is it's the uh, yes the, the Papa, Papa Billy, the people who can become Pope. You know, uh, they're saying now that most of them are apostate. In other words, they have no faith in the church anymore. And this is the church saying this. There's a massive schism within the Roman Catholic Church, and it probably started from, from the, the fact that in the 1960s, the Pope did not release the third secret of Fatima. Yes. And then, uh, and when, when it was re supposedly released, it wasn't kind of like the full part. And and there's, there's people like Father Malachi Martin, this Irish, Irish one who... who been working in the Vatican for many years and actually served at Cardinals and the Pope. He knew the third secret and he, he left. He was so dis disgusted with it all uh, and wrote a book about the apostasy in, in the Catholic Church. And then we have Padre Pio, who is this uh, wonderful Roman Catholic priest. I mean, the majority of Roman Catholics are wonderful, practicing spiritual people. And, and um, what we have is this this node now on, on the on the Mount Carvo, and it, this used to be the end of the, the Appian Way, which is mentioned in, in Roman uh, texts, and it was a, a pilgrimage, a, end of the pilgrimage site. There's this wonderfully large uh, node at the top of Mount Carvo, and it's now it's got lovely old temples up there, but now it's covered with all these satellites masts and, and phone masts, and um, so we've known that node needs to be repaired and activated. We've known there was a node in in, in Rome somewhere, and we knew the, the node in Peru was supposed to be formed. And I kind of had the feeling that I, for, for some time this year that I felt that I should be working in Rome at this time. Uh, and I, kinda, I didn't get any signs at all. Didn't get any signs I was going to Peru either. <laughs> um, but since uh, I've got a couple of lovely friends who, who um, live in Oregon and they have a heart, large number of followers and, and they're very spiritual people. And I, I, I went over to, to California about three years ago to, to work with them, training them how to uh, move lines, repair nodes. And they, everything sort of fell in, early on this year, everything sort of fell into place with meeting the right 
people in Peru. They knew the place. The, the right people came forward. Synchronicities were there. And they're there right now. We, 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 we literally last Thursday uh, on the 16th, we, we formed a connection between a group over here and several people over here. And they had a group over there. We were at a place called Saxe Kurman. Uh, at a place called the, the uh, Maya Merka, which is a, where is an old water tower, where your tower is not there, but it's where the Emperor the Dragon runs through. Mm-hmm. And we conducted the repair ceremony uh, on the 16th, just a few days ago. And tomorrow, uh, which will be the 20th, is when the uh, final activation stage. So the node is repaired, but it's not been activated. It's in the middle of middle of the mountains, mm. in, in, a, in, a, in a green field. And the only people that know about this site is a local village, and the villagers and they hold a solstice ceremony every year it's not on it's not on the beacon track i mean the, the tourist guides don't know about it they have and, and and literally you don't find videos on this on this site but there is a pre-megalithic site now ah. uh, and um tomorrow midday that's when there's a group of 30 people being taken there with the elders for this massive activation ceremony and, and our group's that are uh, meeting around the world uh, will know about this uh, on our um, how many times gatherings tomorrow at midday around the world and we're all now focusing on sending energy at this place to activate it and then completely activate the emperor dragon grids which will all be completely repaired for the first time in probably thousands of years but the interesting thing is we're sending energy all the way through spain all the way across to the map Carvo node and then directly beaming it into the middle of Rome. Uh, if you mentioned about the bee of you, the, the, the beacons of light we place around the cities of darkness, well, yes. we're going to be putting the biggest beacon of light in the middle of Rome, mm-hmm. shining everything out. And that is going to make a huge difference. And I, I come back to, well, what can we do? Well, this is just the start. When you get, when you get to, We'll probably have over a thousand, maybe two thousand people meditating on this whole activation grid tomorrow. But it'll it'll get to be ten thousand, not long, and then after that it'll be a hundred thousand, and 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 by the middle of next year, we hope to have a million people around the world, if not on the sites, on the sacred sites, connecting up and visualizing this whole grid of likeness and love and light coming out and that external representation will be married married like an alchemical wedding with the internal representation where they they're going within and they're becoming heart-centered and they're, they're going on this journey like you're saying you're going on the journey and, and uh, in the car <laughs> it's uh it's not just getting there you won't get there unless you get you, you go on the journey so we're all going on this journey we're all learning and and and, and, and as that happens our, our widening widening perceptions will grow and and as Steiner says, we will feel what other people feel. We will hear what other people think, um, and we will receive insights from from what other people have insights. And and that's the connection also to the beings in the other worlds and the animals that are trying to help us. And, and it's it's the re- beginnings of the return to group consciousness. But so we can do something. It, we we may look like we're powerless. We don't have to fight. We don't have to pick up weapons. But we can certainly come together in a way that they can't stop. And we can do that. Actually, in the end, we can do that without even being on the sacred sites. We can do that wherever we are. Yes. Because we have the memories. So there's nothing they can do to stop us. Yes. We will eventually be able to do this wherever we are at, at the time, at, at a pre grant time. And we'll do it nonstop in, in the last two weeks leading up to where we need to be. We'll be doing it every moment of the day. And those that want to participate in this meditation, they can go to your network. Well, they don't have to, but that, that, that's the quickest way of finding. We've only got about 280 sites on there at the moment. There will be more sacred sites putting up, but uh, just forming group meditations, uh, uh, even not remotely, on, on what you think might be a sacred site nearby will be a start. Um, and And... and the, the thing is to connect up, and you, you don't need to be of a particular religion because it's it's done in silence. You really you you, you set a common intent before, and you you each do your own thing and connect uh, in a subconscious level. Yeah. Um, but the, the one thing I would say is to don't be rigid and stubborn about how you do things. Yeah, because you'll be taught if you lie yourself, you'll be taught. 
Yes. And you begin to learn that, this, that, that we're getting signs all over the place. I mean, so just on, on the 16th, just a few days ago, we, we, we having brought the lines together, we're just uh, amazed at how many suddenly nature suddenly pops up. There's one lovely lady, Lily, who's, who's, who's <laughs> basically suddenly got this feeling of joy that this whole thing had happened. And there she saw this spider uh, on her leg. You know, it was like the spider, it was called a jumping spider, weaving, you know, the, the, the web coming in. And then, then uh, the, 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 the people at uh, the, the Mayak Marka and Saksi Huaman, they, they, when they finished, they had this huge amount of joy. And as soon as they did that, they saw these two butterflies, water flying around in circles like in a vortex. And um, so there's, there's, there's these insights and feelings that you get given as feedback for what you've done because but the, the actually, if you, if you really think hard about it, you realize how little you did do. Yeah. We, we, I can use it to. In, in but, those, but those signs are encouragement. So look for the signs. You know, I, I'm walking and a, a flower drops right in front of me and I'm looking around and there's no trees. No. That could possibly have this flower. So. <laughs> so we're being encouraged by these signs. I want to tell you about experience that a place you went to recently that I know you went to Mount Diablo, didn't you? Oh my goodness. I can just tell you that it was amazing. Standing there was just amazing. And I did see the nodes connecting in a uh... meditation. It, it, I was describing it as it looked like you know, the airline maps of where they fly to? Yeah. That's yeah, what it yes, looked they, like. Yeah. It looked like yeah. these nodes connecting yes. all over the earth. And that was the beginning of creation right there when yeah. these nodes yeah. connect. Yeah, I yeah. stand in a meditation, but please. <laughs> well, well, uh, a, 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 a chat called me, uh, emailed me along some time ago now and said, is there any nodes nearby where I can go and, and meditate at the solstice? And I said, um, have you been up to Mount Diablo? He says, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> and he's the first person I said, you're going to need to activate it. And he went with a friend and anyway, they, they activated it. This is a few years ago now. And I've still got the picture, the photograph he took afterwards. He said, because when we came out of our meditation, I looked up in the sky and I saw a dragon. <laughs> He couldn't believe it. In the blue sky, and there's this dragon flying. And he, he did a double take on this and realized it wasn't in his mind. It was a kite, a young boy's kite, flying oh. a kite with a dragon. So he took a picture of it. Now, that isn't a sign yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that he'd done something which was connected to the dragon image. So that was brilliant. That was, I have to send you that picture. It's remember. really fun. I'm I'm loving the way this is all coming together, and I'm – you know, you've been documenting your work since, gosh, you've been doing this since 2012 or earlier. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, so, it starts with housing and, and uh, it, it leaves you on a merry journey, really. And, and, um, well, thank you. Thank you for documenting your work for all these years so that we have something to, to understand and follow and look at, you know, and enjoy and be well, excited about. And thank you very much. I'm very excited about the work you're going to do tomorrow. Really well, excited. Not just me. I mean, goodness, there's, there's literally over a thousand people now who who are aware of what's going to happen and they're going to tune in to do this. And and we don't need to do too much because there's so much going on with, with the higher beings who are helping us. we just got to be open to it as aware as possible as we can. And send uh, focus, send open-hearted focus to those particular areas. Yeah, from yeah. wherever you are, that's how it's you can participate. Connect up the grid in your mind and get get into the heart, breathe in love, breathe out love, and you will make a difference. And if we do enough of it, then then the lights will go on in all the establishment buildings around the world that are desperate to control us and centralize us. And they well, will I, win. Yes, I, th I it's so exciting. <laughs> So the one last thing I wanted to ask you was exponentially the dragon lines you were mentioning were widening and all of the actually energy lines were widening. And you were saying that 
by the end of 2024, you felt like we would be completely covered in these beautiful energies. Is that still on track for you? Yes. Uh, yeah. There's, there's, there's two things here. The firstly, the, the the harmony times are gradually extending. They're up to about a month long now. But by the end of 2024, that harmony time will be all year round. But the the emperor dragons do appear to be whitening, and I've got friends who are measuring them. And this widening effect, interestingly, is not just a physical widening effect of the of the energies as they get stronger. But and because these vibrations are linked to, you know, we think the universal consciousness, and that then interacts with our consciousness and our fields. There is a two-way quid pro quo here, whereby if you're developing, you're going to pick that width up as wider. So I've got a friend uh, Rob and, and his friend Joe in the Netherlands who who are finding the lines over a kilometer wide. And I have a, a, another friend, David, who's in, in um, California. I think you might have met, spoken with Yes, David. we've spoken, yes. Yeah, who's now finding them several kilometers wide now. And they're widening. So is, is every, every just how they do that, we're not totally sure. There could be a, a series of shadow wa- waves going backwards and forwards, but uh, there's this individual connection that is also increasing our perceptions of the width, if you know what I mean. Mm. So it's a good it's an external representation of what's what can happen internally. Mm. So if we're allowing our external perceptions to, to to be widened. It's actually in conjunction with our internal perceptions, and, and that's an indication of our own transformations. Mm. So, okay, I like it. And that goes back <laughs> to the mirror. Yes. And looking into the mirror and Those looking facts. into it. Yeah. Oh, excellent! Wow. Um. <laughs> Relaxing into that. <laughs> I'm still struggling to try and finish these modules as well. I don't even mention them, but um, there's, there's a, I'm, I'm putting together these sacred path modules. This is just the, the level two modules. There's going to be five five levels of modules, which I hope to have finished. That's the level three module. I've just got to write up the level four. This is a sacred path module, which takes people through. Prophecies, synchronicities, uh, earth energies, uh, Jung's red book images, uh, yes. all the universal prophecies we come across, and group group meditation. And, and it, it's about developing a group and the necessary uniqueness of individuals within the group. Um, have you have you released the first ones? Or are you going to release them as a set? Then no, they're going to you're, you're going to be doing them one at a time. Um, and, and once you've done a module, you can then teach them. Because the idea is you do it once and you train a group at least once. And so once you've done it, you can train others. And and, and the idea is to set up groups that learn how to work together at sacred sites, but they're, they're also learning how to grow together because we, we learn so much more through groups than we do. From, so if you think of reading a novel or looking at a painting, we can get a certain perspective, which is really two-dimensional. But when you put the group together, yes, with the attributes in the group, it blows your mind. I've run, th- I've run three groups through all five levels now, and each time I'm I'm just am- amazed at what what comes through because of the different skills and abilities and experiences of each member of the group. You're just thinking, whoa! Now you can imagine lots of groups look- doing this, looking at all these things. It's just, it's just going to be phenomenal. And well, the audience, you- the audience is going to want to know how to get how to get into a group. Well, you, you start forming your groups online at the Sacred Network. Okay, the, the the books will be launched there, so you'll be able to get get them on there. We're going to develop it in the next four or five months. We're going to be developing the sacred network into a, a, a way we can actually get you these things sooner, quicker. Get the materials. Yeah. Register an interest on 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 on, on the um, the public site there. Form groups there, and and, and essentially there'll be dialogue, just discussion and dialogue groups. Meditation groups, dream groups, and if you do all three, that group will help build a community, and that that will help you and your community travel through this evolution of consciousness. And are you teaching any of these groups anytime soon, or teaching any of well, these I've been, modules? I've been doing it for two two and a half years, so I'm going to take <laughs> a bit of. Do you have another? Do you have another group you're 
another module you're starting. I will hope to start them uh, as we come out of the summer and going into the uh, autumn, going into winter. I'll start start uh, a couple more groups then. But the idea is for the people who've been through the groups to, to start. It'll be a slow. It'll take a while, but gradually more and more people will do it. Uh, and then, as I said, as soon as you've done a module, you can teach it. Of well, course, not teach it, but facilitate it. The, the guidebooks have had a facilitate. Are they in per, are they in person? Groups in person or online? No, I've been doing it to, with groups around the world on Zoom. Oh, yeah. wonderful! Yeah, and 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 it's really strange. I had a, a chap um, from Dubai. We, 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 we he came over to to the UK just literally last weekend, and um, so we met in the flesh first time in Bath. He came down on the train. And it's like, I, 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 it was like seeing an old friend I've never seen him before. Not, not like, it's like, and it, it was it was really strange, but but great because it's like you, you knew so much. So, so it, it's it's another way how we can bring the world closer. Yes. Uh, and uh, and it's, uh, that that's that's yeah. I, I think it's natural for most people to want to get on and make friends with everybody, and uh, there's just a small percentage that want to kill everybody and blow everybody up and, and rule everything. <laughs> 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 well, it sounds like those modules will be really helpful. And once we can get a group going, they, we, we can yeah. learn it yeah. and teach it. That's excellent. I'm sorry about your injury. What happened? Oh, um, that was me being stupid. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, that so happened. I tried to, try, try, try to physically get stronger. Uh, and uh, I was hanging on a bar for too long, and then I picked up a dumbbell, which is in the wrong angle. Oh. I, should, I should know better. But, uh, well... Anyway. You know, the universe yeah. laid me down on purpose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Roy, yeah. this is so exciting. I love speaking with you. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for well, thank you, sharing yeah. with us all of this knowledge. So tomorrow, um, you'll be working on the lines from Peru all the way to Rome and that's fantastic. Yeah, we've got a group group in Peru. There'll be about 56 of them on this node, the locals as well. And then uh, I've got people tuning in along the line elsewhere, and and, and we're all going to be doing it. It's just, it's, uh, and, and hopefully we'll see a dramatic effect in the world, but more specifically in parts of Rome. Very interesting. I wanted to ask you the activation of the nodes. Is that a process that you teach or is that something available online or do you just tell people how to do it? If you're finding a, a place that you would like to activate within your own, because when I was looking at Hamish Miller's book, he was talking about that there's a power spot usually in your home or around the property somewhere. And, um, his, of course, were his where he built his studio when he was doing his um, blacksmithing. But I found one in my house, <laughs> and I actually needed to move it. It was in my kitchen, and I felt like I needed to just nudge it over a bit. So active. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, it, he wrote a book called "It's Not Too Late." Lovely book, one of my favorite ones he wrote, and, and he talks about the uh, the Hartman Curry grids uh, and how that changed in his home when the moon came into uh, an eclipse he doused it and how, how it came into a spiral so there, there um, and, and there's other things called banker grids and their intersections have water seas so your home will have these things in here and you you can do things to move them and, and work with them yes so I activating so i, I was asking about yes. activating them yes there's a if you look at my first book grail found which you know, if you want grail found grail bound just go on you know, any way you can get them is to go on my website and buy them that way but uh, in that you'll find this book of uh higher uh, in there it's mentioning hieroglyphic figures by a chap called Abraham and the mage and in one of them in the words in one of them he says the secret of the universe is to fasten the python with it by a golden nail and and that golden nail is that golden light going down from heaven, going down into the ground. So you breathe that energy, golden love, light energy down it and up in it. You pin the neck, the serpent, to the cross. And that's the that's the secret of the universe. That's anchoring the lines. That's activating and anchoring the lines. And um, yeah, there's a little bit more than that, but that that's what we do. Yeah. 
bringing in the column of light. But it's yeah. again, it's the earth energy, top down, bottom up. So we want the to... upper sun and the lower sun, and and the importance of the upper sun and the lower sun is to balance that energy. Yes. Because it, that balance is not too much coming down, not too much coming up, and of course it runs straight into the uh, the Ida and Pingala, which creates the Shushumna, which is the the, uh, the Kundalini energies, which I'm sure you obviously know about. Yes, Kundalini. <laughs> Talk about holding on to your hat. So many people are going through Kundalini now; they're experiencing it. Yes, yes. Because they're being subjected to much greater energies. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want to keep you any longer, but if there's any other parting words you'd like to share with us. Just get out there and do it. Get out and, and, and find these sites, meditate, find groups, and, 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 and uh, let, let, let the energies teach you. Don't, don't listen to me. Just I, I can just help you, hopefully help you direct you to certain places and let, 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 let what happens guide you after that. Follow synchronicity. Excellent. If we do that, we're following the grand design. Yeah. Yes, follow synchronicity. It's the grin. Thank you so much. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. I'm Thank I'm just much. touched that you said yes again. Thank you. And um, we'll mention the books. And if you uh, the um, modules, do they buy them or do they just the module books? Yeah, the they, 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 they yeah they they're not for sale. The books, but you have it's like a it, it, it's doing a course. Yeah, okay. So it's like it's got to be done by as though it's a school with school books. Okay. Because the books contain so much information that comes from so many different people. The only way to get to 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 address the copyright issues is to to teach it and make it uh, educational. Okay. So, so the facilitators will get the guidebooks, and and each individual will get notebooks, special notebooks with everything we to put information on. So the facilitators, but once as soon as you've done done the level, you can then teach that level, and and, and you can access as a facilitator, you can access that for your group. Yeah. So there's a, there's a cost to that, and and and, and there is a cost to doing the courses, but you recoup that by being the facilitators. It's like you know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, have a have a wonderful meditation tomorrow and the solstice. Thank you very much. And we'll be sending love and light your way if. Anyone wants to participate, just send light. <laughs> so much, yeah, thank you. Thank you again. Aloha. Take good care. Yeah, aloha. Aloha.